talk about what this really means for the Midlands, what the state has to hold? Well, I want to thank Lou Kennedy, Bill Kennedy, and Nephron for making this enormous investment. They're taking a great step forward. Uh, this is a part of our plan to get into life sciences, pharmaceuticals. Uh, this is the, this kind of uh, investment and this kind of business is, is something that is vital to our future, for our national security. So thank you and your country for the, the great faith that you've shown in the people of South Carolina in this place in these years. Also, this, this shows how we don't have to be dependent on China and these other countries that we do not want to be dependent on for PPE or anything else. Uh, it's part of our national security. And I say again, this is just the beginning. This is a, a great expansion for this country. It's a great expansion of the vision of South Carolina for the future of business here. Our business is business, and this is a great part of it. And also in terms of our national security and strength of the country, it's a great step forward as well. Do you, I know that you mentioned, obviously, this other, other investment that you announced a few months ago or a month ago, and then this today. Do you have any other plans that you think you're going to roll out? The Don't count me out maybe even before next summer. No, we have about two or three other things that we're working on um, that we talked about last summer. Those haven't all manifested. We're finishing those out this summer. And when those are done, we'll make sure to let you guys know. But we are currently building a vaccine, antibiotic and chemotherapeutic wing. And then at the um, end of the park, we're hoping to get into the um, syringe business. So not just uh, PP, not just drugs, but also the components we need. Progress through on those vaccine partners that you're looking for? Um, I've added a third. Uh, there was a new, newly um, approved vaccine in Israel just last week, and we're hoping to be speaking with them this coming week. So who knows which one will end up? But we're in an RFP process with one of the big ones that we all know. Lou, Lou, what's your secret with the pharmaceutical business? It seems like. You're always here, you're always building something new, and I have recovered a failure story. Right well, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Let's go ahead and be clear with that. I like lots of things going on. I probably am undiagnosed ADD, but somehow I like a lot of things moving, and I like to get a lot of things accomplished, and I am probably second only to Henry in being a cheerleader for this great state. Governor McMaster is the best cheerleader for us, and I try to come in right behind him. Well, it's more like she's got a hotline to me. <laughs> yes, uh, I've been here a, a, a number of visits over the years, and this is what this is what our future success looks like right here. And uh, great, great, great thanks and encouragement to Lou and Bill and the company and all the people that make it work. I mean, we are growing the healthcare life sciences sectors and the governor supported that with his executive order about a month or so ago and each each month it seems like something new is opening and as chairman of SC Bio I can tell you we've grown our membership by more than double and we've grown our budget by about four or five times because people are excited about this sector. The governor, the governor was talking about jobs and the people of South Carolina. What have you found as a business owner that you can do this? You can find the right people, the trained people, the technical college people, as you would say. Talk about the people of Lexington County and the surrounding areas coming to you that you can offer creating jobs. And why is it so important to do it here? So there are a number of ways that we do that. We currently have 96 interns here at Nephron. We often, often hire the interns once they graduate. Next of all, we, we use unorthodox methods. We're using social media and the like. And then it helps that I went to kindergarten, middle school, high school, and college here. Because if you walk through Nephron, you'd see my friends, my friends' kids, their cousins, and so forth. So it's been um, great to be back home because it is a great place to recruit. I'll tell you a little bit about the fabric of our company. 53% women, over 35% African American, 43 countries are represented here. We are the essence of diversity and that makes us more productive, and I think that answers your question. That's a lot of why we're successful. Governor, is this a pretty decent start for Secretary Lightsey's tenure? This is a pretty good, a pretty good start, but as Lou has hinted, and as we know, there, there will be plenty more. Okay, then. That it, Oh, yeah, we got some off topic. Um, your comments about the proposal to rename buildings on campus in USC. Say what? There's a proposal to rename some of the buildings on USC. So, um, you know, like.
baseball tournament, what have yeah. you. So just I think that the the latest uh, news I heard was that that was the. the there's an emphasis on naming new buildings to honor those who have not been honored. I, I think that is a, uh, that's a very, very positive step. Of course, the, the Heritage Act was there for all to, uh, uh, to navigate. Obviously, to, to tail off of that question, um, obviously the Supreme Court has not come out with opinion yet on that three-fifths rule right. in the General Assembly. Even if they don't uh, rule it unconstitutional, do you think that the General Assembly should take up the Heritage Act next year to deal with buildings like uh, Tillman Hall on Winthrop's campus and Clemson's campus? They've obviously asked the legislature to do something uh, with the Heritage Act. Do you think they should take well, up Well, the, the court's decision may give some guidance on that, but I, I think there'll be plenty, there'll be ample time for discussion on all those questions. Do you think that the three-fifths rule is unconstitutional? Do you think that the three-fifths rule is unconstitutional? Two thirds. Or two-thirds, thank you, thank you. Yeah. That the two-thirds rule is unconstitutional? No, I do not. Governor, uh, last night we, uh, we covered uh, some members of the Cuban community in front of the State House. Uh, they were kind of asking for an American intervention. And, uh, what are your feelings on or what's going on in Cuba? And, I uh, think that Cuba shows what a, what a communist dictatorship will do to a country. And due to people, uh, we've been watching Cuba ever, ever since uh, Fidel Castro got there and before. Uh, they've been going in the, in the wrong direction. And I, I, do, I hope that the Biden administration, which has, has made some good statements, will follow that up with strong action to, to help the people of Cuba. Governor, the Senate's budget proposal includes millions of dollars for Medicaid expansion to get around what states like South Carolina who have said no to Medicaid expansion. I'm wondering what your thoughts are if the well, federal that The Medicaid expansion, you're speaking of Obamacare that had the expansion in way back. Yeah, but well, there, that, 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 that proposal would have provided federal funds, which is of course comes from South Carolina taxpayers and others. Uh, at the beginning, but then ultimately the whole load uh, would shift to the states, and we simply could not afford that then, and we cannot afford that now. But how would you feel about Congress putting money into the budget to get around that, to provide I think, a million? I think the better thing is to put money into roads, bridges, economic growth and development. Uh, the best welfare program is a job. People who, who work, who, who are earning a living, uh, statistically, we know are, are healthier, wealthier, and wiser, and that is the direction in which we need to be going. Any more? I have one more. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> On earmarks, um, your favorite subject. Um, I understand that Senators Harputlian and Clymer sent a letter asking uh, for more auditing of the groups that are receiving earmark money and wanted to get your thoughts on that. I, I think that's a, another step in the right direction. I think what the best answer to that would be what I've proposed is, is go all the way and have all of the money that is given to the, the agencies to let the agencies have, have uh, hearings and have a, a grants competition uh, so that everyone can have their say and the people will know exactly where the money is going. Ultimately, that is, that, that is the ultimate solution and I think it's the best one. But we're heading in that, trying to head in that direction. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.